The Franklin Institute had just opened their uh, museum that had a lot of uh, hands-on things that you could do there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they wanted to, the public to, to know about it. And uh, so they thought maybe television was the way to get people in there. Well, uh, actually, it was this, uh, in August, and uh, uh, people from all over the country were there to see the <clears throat> the uh, place where our company, our country, was set up, and all the historical things there. And they found themselves waiting in line to see television at the Franklin Institute. This was the first public demonstration, as far as I know, the first public de demonstration of television, and you basically put on a show for them, right? <laughs> we <laughs> didn't realize how hard it was to get keep live uh, pictures going on television yet, right. of course. Um, we didn't rely on films, which they do a lot now. Right. But um, we had everything from trained dogs and uh, bears, ventriloquists, uh, um, and puppet shows, and the last day, um, Seymour Turner, who uh, had come to from San Francisco to try to um, get things going there, uh, he and his father had invested in Farnsworth stock, and so he was the, the one to to get the the program together. And so he had a nightclub come and do their floor show. Wow. Well, Dr. Barnes, who was uh, head uh, of the uh, technical part for the Institute, and Howard McClinahan, I guess he was the president, came to see this. And uh, he said, um, I never thought the state old Franklin Institute would ever come to this. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Barnes says, but Howard, where would you ever have gotten, a, you've made more money than you've had, had mm -hmm. the whole history of your museum. Now this was 1934. Uh, and can you describe the setup of this demonstration? How did it work? All right. They had a 50-seat a, a auditorium. Mm -hmm. Uh, they've now enlarged that. I was uh, visited that for this program mm -hmm. in the, I guess it was uh, January this mm -hmm. year. Anyway, they had um, this auditorium, and outside of that was a, a space that he could set up his uh, camera tube, and, and uh, then they had they took the camera out on the lawn set up a, an impromptu uh, st stage where they could do boxing and uh, other sports things. And the people would be inside the auditorium watching these events that were yes, set up outside. Right. Of course, there were always crowds outside, too. Waiting to, waiting to see television. And then they would also take it to the roof. Mm -hmm. And there was one clear night and a full moon, and Phil turned it on the moon, and that got more of a... a um, uh, response from the public than anything. And the, these uh, reporters, uh, the headline was uh, The Moon sits, sits for its first portrait or something like that. And so inside the auditorium they could see the moon mm -hmm. on television. So what were the people's response when you would, what was the response in the audience to television? Do you recall seeing them and hearing what they, people would say? Yes, they they were, you know, it was magic. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, television at that point, uh, we had a picture, uh, well, the picture tube was about like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that they could see it quite well because this was a graduated seating. Mm -hmm. And they had to change the program every 15 minutes to take care of the crowds. Wow. And so the people in this 50 foot or 50 seat auditorium were looking at a picture that was maybe 12, 12 inches by 12 inches. And they were amazed by what they saw. Very much so.